very much what God's doing. So let me share with you a couple of things that I feel like God wants me to share with you. Uh, and that is, um, many of you might know this or you might not know this, uh, and that is that when we talk about God and who he is, uh, what, one thing that I love, I'm an Old Testament guy. I love the, um, connecting the Old Testament to the New Testament. And with that, man, there are 12 actual names that describe a characteristic of our Heavenly Father. Isn't that amazing? 12 different characteristics. And these are names that the nation of Israel, um, the name of Israel, gave to God because of something that God did. And so I want to talk about one of them today before we go into some time of prayer. Yes, Josh, we are the church. And we're not just the church, we're that church, praise God. Epic Life Church is that church. Um, And so one of the names that he uses is found in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 48, verse 35. And I love this because it says that it is the Lord is our Shama, S-H-A, or it's S-H-A-M-M-A-A, Shama or Shama. Uh, And that what that really means is that the Lord is there. Uh, and, and, you know, during this time, it's really easy to think as we're in our homes and we look at our world and, and how everybody's kind of freaking out about all of this stuff and the, the, the virus that's going around. It's easy to think that God is absent from all of this that's happening. But can I tell you, man, as your pastor this morning, can I tell you as a friend and a brother in Christ, can I tell you that God is there? He's not left us. He's not abandoned us. He's not out something trying to pay his bills and do taxes and and doesn't have a clue of what's going on. God is there. He is the Lord or Shama, Shama, S-H-A-M-M-A-H. So I want to encourage you in that. I know it's easy to back off and go, man, where's God in all of this? He's there. And here's what I'm feeling in my spirit. I I shared this with uh, Miss Robin and Patrick online this morning. And that is, man, this is the time where we press in. And I'm not going to lie to you. It is a great time as a church that we should be spending more time in prayer. Matter of fact, as you are uh, having more time isolated from everyone else, running around, hopefully your busyness has come to a maybe not a standstill, but maybe even a crawl to where you're not so busy that you can actually take a pause and go to the Father. And here's what I'm praying. I'm praying that we would partner with God with whatever it is that he needs us to do. If it's something that, if it deals with repentance, maybe in my own family, that we would come to a place that we would repent. And that just simply means that we turn away from whatever it is that we're doing. I love to post that I read on Facebook a couple of days ago. It says that all of the distractions that pulled us away from our Heavenly Father has really unfortunately, I guess, you know, been removed. For instance, if if you're a big sports fan, well, guess what? No more sports, right? If you're a big uh, out-of-town guy and you like to go out town and dance and do all these parties and do all this stuff, well, guess what? All of that's done. If you're big into physical fitness and, and want to be at the gym all the time, and that's where you're, that's your thing, right? Well, even that's being done. So what is it doing? It's putting God back in the center, but I want you to know that he is, he, is, he is El Shema. He is the Lord that's there. He is there. The Bible promises us that he will never, never leave us nor forsake us. He's not gone. He's watching. He knows everything that's happening right now in this world. And you know what I think? I think it wants, he wants us to just draw to him. Not run from him in fear or trepidation, but to run towards him and say, God, what is it that you want me to do during this time? How can I be a better husband? How can I be a better wife? How can I be a better better kid during this time? How can I pray for my family? How can I pray for my community? More importantly, how can I pray for our world? Because here's what's really cool about all of this. And I talked to Robin about this this morning. Isn't it interesting that we are all on equal ground now? It doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter how intelligent you are or not, right? It doesn't matter of any of that. We are all from America all the way around the world. The whole globe is on equal footing right now. And all of us, man, have to come to a place in our life where we draw near to the Father and simply ask him this question. What is it that you need from me? Where can I pray better? 
Maybe you haven't been there. Maybe you've been in a place in your life where you've not really spent a lot of time in prayer. Well, man, look at this. Now you've got plenty of time, right? Turn off that TV for a little bit. Uh, you know, this isn't a shutdown. It's an open up. Amen, Joshua. I love that, man. It isn't a shutdown. It's an open up. Let's open up the body of Christ and begin to pray like we've never prayed. Let's begin to love like we've never loved. Let's, Man, if you've got neighbors, man, what a great time, man, to just maybe keep your six feet right now if you're in Kaufman County. I don't know how it is up there in Michigan with you, Bob, but... Uh, but this is a great time to reach out to your neighbors and to love them like we're called to love. This is not a time, man, to run and hide and to walk in fear. This is a time to live out in faith and allow God to strengthen that faith and remember that he's here. He's here. Remember, man, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? I mean, they were in the fire, man. They were in the, in the furnace. And I love Nebuchadnezzar's response. He says, man, he said, didn't we throw three people in there? But I see a fourth and he looks like the son of God. Can I tell you this morning that he's in this with you? He hasn't left you. He's not abandoned you. He's not forsaken you. But man, use this time to strengthen your walk. Maybe you're not reading your Bible like you should. Maybe you've been, you know, letting other things take priority on it. Man, why don't you open that thing up and get into it and just start to maybe just read a passage of scripture a day and let that just meditate on that throughout the day. Or here's a crazy thought. What about gathering your family? What about gathering your family together in the living room tonight? Maybe before you go to bed, right? Chills every time. I know, that fourth man. What about getting together and, and, and watch this? What about open this up and just read a passage, right? Read a small passage to your family. And then here, dads, moms, why don't you take turns praying over your family? But don't stop there. Pray for your community, because I know there's several different communities that are represented here. A friend of mine from uh, Michigan's on here right now. My brother, man, uh, Bob uh, Pihilik. Man, he's on here right now. He's out in Michigan. Uh, when we had our live airing, uh, our live stream, we had people, man, from all over the place that were all around the world that were uh, checking into us. We have an opportunity, church, to not, not let our feet weaken us, but let our faith strengthen us in understanding that he is there. He is El Shema. He's the Lord that is present. Don't ever forget that. Yeah, amen, Ashley. He is our Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. Let me tell you something. He already knows the finish line. He's already there with you guys. Don't get discouraged. I don't know how long this season's going to last, but we're believing that it's quick. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to pray for your world. I want you to pray for your community. I want you to pray for your family, and I want you to remember, church, that God is present. He's present. He hasn't left you. He hasn't forsaken you. He is right here in the midst of this with you, and he'll let it draw you to him. Let it draw you to be the man or woman that God has called you to be. I know a lot of people are going to be watching this later online, and uh, maybe you're watching this, and, and maybe you just need to share the heck out of this, because here's what I'm going to tell you. Maybe you don't have that relationship with Christ, and maybe that's why you have so much fear, is that you look at the world as your source. Can I encourage you today, man, that Jesus Christ paid a, paid a debt that you and I could never pay. He paid the debt of sin, that there's no way that you could have paid it. You're, the Bible says that our right deeds, our righteousness, is this filthy rags to the Father. But yet Jesus Christ took upon himself the punishment of our sin. And he says, the Bible says, man, that if we'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, confess him and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, if we'll confess him with our mouth, the Bible says, man, that Jesus Christ will come in and live with us and our lives will be made new when we surrender our life to him. And that's really what this is all about. This is a great opportunity for the church to rise up and share the gospel. And sometimes it's this. Jesus said, by this one thing will men know that you're my disciples. Not because, man, you're smarter, richer, you're healthier, you're wealthier, you got five cars in the driveway. Not any of that. He said, by this one thing, and that is by the love. By his love. So we love each other, man, during this time. And I hope you'll take that time of love and spend some time in prayer. 
And let's do that today. That's what I want to do for the next few minutes. we got about 10 folks on here, and I know people will be bouncing in and out because you guys got things to do. But what I wanted to do, man, is pray. And so as we're looking at this thing right here, if you have a prayer request, would you go ahead and just type it in, right? Uh, go ahead and type it in, and then I'm going to try to pray for that as we go along uh, and let me know how we can be praying for you. But also, man, this will be on later, so other people will be praying for you. So here's how you can pray for Epic Life right now. Uh, one, would you pray for Robin and myself and Patrick and... Uh, to have wisdom on on doing church online. I've never done this before. This is new for me, right? And so would you pray for that? Would you pray for Sunday? Sunday, we're kicking off a brand new message series on the book of Ephesians, man. And this is the book. This is the book of the church. If you want to know how it is to be a Christian and what it means to be a Christian and, and walk in that, let's pray that. Amber Robb is asking for prayers for her students that they're not only safe, uh, but they have a safe place uh, uh, and their school is safe as well. I'm guessing that's what you're asking for a prayer. Prayers for my students that their only safe place was school. Ah, I got you. Amen. I pray for those students that maybe don't have a safe home, uh, a home environment. I got you. Man, let's pray for those students. Let's lift that up right now. Can we do that, Father, right now in Jesus' name? We lift up all these students, Lord God, that have been in school and they're missing school right now. And for some of them, Lord, that was their only safe place. So, Lord God, we ask that you would, Lord, that you would divinely intervene with some of these families in Jesus' mighty name. We ask you, Father God, that you'd protect them, that you'd watch over them, Father God, and that, Lord God, that they would not uh, be left alone and lost through all of this stuff that's going on. Father, we pray for their protection right now in Jesus' name, Let, whether it be from a, an abuser or, Father God, from lack. Father, we ask that you would provide for them. We ask that you would protect them right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for witty ideas in our teachers and those that are reaching out that would be able to have ways to reach out to these students uh, to offer them some sort of safety, some sort of uh, way of protecting them right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Amber, for that. Lord, we lift up our church. Lord God, we pray for uh, Epic Life. We pray for the body of Christ, the church in general, worldwide. Lord, where this is being a challenge to all of us of how do we reach out? How do we reach more people? How do we share the gospel? Lord, this could not have happened at a better time. In a time where there's technology and a way to advance the gospel without ever being face to face. So, Lord, I lift that up to you right now in Jesus' name. And I ask you, Lord God, for witty ideas and inventions and doors of opportunity to open towards us so that we can reach more people. Lord, maybe this is the way revival is going to come. And if it is, Lord, we want to partner with you. We want to partner with you in this venture that we're on right now, in the season that we're in. Father, we pray for more people to come and know Jesus Christ like never before right now in Jesus' name. Um, Father, we just thank you for that. We thank you for uh, wisdom and insight. We pray for our world, Lord. Where there, we pray for those who have contracted, contracted this virus. And we pray, Lord God, for safety in them. We pray for hospital beds to open by people becoming healed right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for all of the students across the world, seniors too that are terrified of what's going to take place in their future and, and what, the event, what their future events uh, might look like, Lord God, or uh, all the 12 years of their life that they've had. Lord, we pray for them right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for this season to end. But Lord, that during this time, Lord, I pray that you would draw the church, Father God, to be stronger than it ever has been before right now in Jesus' name. God, we thank you so much for your word, that your word doesn't return void. Lord, we thank you that your word tells us in Ezekiel, Lord God, that you've not left us, you're not forsaken us, but Lord, that you are, you are the Lord, you're El Shema, you're the Lord that is there. You're right here with us, Father God, you're walking this through us. Help us to lean in and trust you, Father, during this time. Lord, when we don't know what to do, Father, Lord, we're going to run to you. We're not going to walk by faith. Lord, let not fear dominate our lives or our thinking. Let, let not fear dominate us. But, Lord God, let us walk by faith. Let us trust you, Lord God, that you know the end. And, Lord God, we're going to trust you in the middle of all of this. Lord, we thank you so much. We thank you so much for uh, pastors all across the world that are, Lord, that they're trying to figure this thing out. Father, right now in Jesus' name, Lord, we lift up, like Joshua said, uh, Josh uh, Ward says, Lord, uh, that we would learn to be still during this time and know 
that you're in the presence of us. You're here with us uh, in the midst of all of this going on. Uh, Help us to be still. Maybe that's what we need to do. Maybe we just need to find a place where we can be still. And I know some of you that's hard because you have your children. Uh, So, Lord, I pray for mom and dad. I pray for ideas to help the kids, Lord, deal with this time at home. Uh, Lord, at least they can go outside. And now that the rain is off and it's not raining no more, we thank you for that. So we just lift up mom and dad. We pray for extra grace to be on mom and dad and the parents that are at home. Uh, Lord, we pray for those who have lost jobs. Lord God, their jobs are either on hold. I've already had people talking about... uh, where their jobs have not, uh, some of them have already lost their jobs. And so, Lord, we want to pray. There's another name that God has, and it's Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. And the word Jehovah Jireh means the Lord that provides. God, that you're going to be our provider, Lord. I pray for families to come together stronger than ever before. That, uh, That this is a time of coming together like never before, Father, and always always stronger, Lord God, than they were before. Lord, we pray, we plead the blood of the Lamb to cover all that's evil that cannot come near our dwelling according to Exodus 12. And Lord, Psalms 91, Father God, that says that a thousand may fall at our side and 10,000 our right hand. But Lord, your word says in Psalms 90, uh, 91, uh, nine, Psalms 91, verses 9 and 10, it says, nothing shall come near our dwelling. So, Lord God, we just plead the blood of Christ over these families. Lord, we pray for quick healing in those who've contracted the virus. Father, we pray for wisdom. Would you join me, church? Let's pray for wisdom in the doctors and the scientists. Um, Father, that you would pour out your blessing on them, Father God, and and help guide um, our, our communities to healing right now in Jesus' name. God is good, and he's good all the time, praise God. Dolores is praying for, uh, let's pray for her her nephew, Jeffrey Hine. He's in the ER right now, a lot of pain, and they can see what's going on. So we don't know that what the pain is being called, but Lord, let's lift up Jeffrey. Father, we lift him up right now in Jesus' name. And Lord God, we plead the blood of Christ over him. We pray for healing in that body. We pray for wisdom in the doctors, Father, right now, Father God, Lord. We pray for this pain to go away. We pray for his body to function according to structure and design right now in Jesus' mighty name. God, where the doctors don't know what to do, you are the great physician. And we ask you that you would bring healing to all of those who need it today right now in Jesus' name. We pray for a breakthrough in this coronavirus, Lord God. We pray for our government. Can we do that? I don't care whether you're a Democrat or a Republican or an independent. We need to pray for those that are in authority. Amen. We need to lift them up because they've got hard decisions to make. Lord, we lift up everyone who is in authority. And Lord God, we ask that you would pour out your spirit on them, that they would hear your voice, that you would lead, guide, and direct their steps, Father God. And the decisions that they want to make on their own that are not good and that are not of you, Father, we ask that those things just fall right now in Jesus' name. And Lord God, we pray for our president. We pray that you'd protect him. We pray that you'd watch over him right now in Jesus' name. Whether we agree with him or not, He is. your word says that all authority have been given to us by you. And so that means that our president is there only because you allowed him to be there. So Lord, we pray for him right now in Jesus' name. I'm not saying that we have to agree with him, but I am saying that we need to pray for him right now in Jesus' name. So Lord, we lift up his family. Lord, is their family probably absent without him because he's busy running this country. So Lord, we ask that you would just watch over his family right now in Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you so much for your spirit of grace on our church, your spirit of grace in our communities. And Lord, I lift up all of our families, Lord, right now, that Lord God, that are struggling. And Lord, it's easy to just look at all this stuff as uh, as terrifying. But Lord, I pray for them right now that you would give them courage, and that you give them a peace. See, church, the Bible says, man, that God would give us a peace that surpasses all understanding. And that it would rule and guard our hearts in Christ Jesus. Here's what happens. When you start not having peace, here's what I need you to do, right? Just do this. Just say, I have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. You know why I know that? Because the Bible says that one of the fruits of the Spirit is peace. It's love, joy, peace. We have, you have a peace, you got to tap into it. It's not a t- peace that the world can give you. It's not a peace, man, that even I can give you as your pastor. It's a peace that only God can give you. And isn't it amazing that no matter what happens in our world, we can have peace. 
because we have this amazing relationship with our Heavenly Father. I love you guys. I see some people are starting to check out. That means I'm probably preaching too long. All right. I love you guys. Let's continue. Let's continue to pray. Would you do that tonight? Here's what I want you to do tonight. Dads, I, first of all, I want you to share this and make sure that people go to the end. Tell them, go to the end of this, all right? But share this video. And here's what I want you to do tonight. I want you to gather your family together before you go to bed. I want you to take a cracker and I want you to crumble it in a plate. Grab some grape juice. It don't even have to be grape juice, but we use grape juice, right? Grab some water. Grab juice. Grab, if you got some wine, use wine. It, you're not going to go to hell for it, I promise you, okay? Take this and take communion. Take communion as a family. Why do we take communion? The Bible says, man, as often as we think of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are to think of the crucifixion. The bread represents the body of Christ that was broken, right? The Bible says, man, in Isaiah, it says that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And watch this. By his stripes, we are healed. We are healed by the body that was broken for us. So take that cracker and that's all you got to do. Say, we remember the body that was broken for us in Jesus' name and take it. And then grab the wine, your juice, whatever, grab that. And that, that, the Bible says that that represents the blood of the new covenant. What does that mean? We're under a new covenant of grace. And that grace is God's unmerited favor. Yes, it exists. And it's because of what Jesus Christ died on the cross. You cannot earn your salvation, but it is by grace alone that you're saved. By grace. By saying, God, I don't deserve this gift, but you've given it to me anyway. That's grace. And so you remember the blood. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And so you take that juice and you remember that. And then men or moms, whoever's going to be doing it, maybe even over your own self, pray over your family. Pray over our world. Pray over the people that are losing their jobs and the doctors and all those that are working crazy hours trying to figure out what's going on in our community right now. And so let's do that, okay? I love you guys so much. You guys, man, keep the light strong. Remember, he is El Shammai, right? He, he is the Lord in our presence. I might be pronouncing it wrong, but that's okay. Tomorrow I'm going to come online and we'll talk about another one, another name of the Lord that we'll talk about, all right? God bless you. We are going to be doing live feed again, live streaming this week. Also, hey, pass this out. If you know someone that's going to be baptized, all right, we're probably going to do baptisms on Saturday evening. Did you hear me? We're going to do, how are we going to do that, Pastor Mike? Well, we're going to invite whoever was ready to be baptized, one family at a time, no more than six in their family, and we're going to do a live baptism right here on, uh, on our Epic Live Facebook page. And so you don't want to miss that, okay? It's going to be really great. I think we've got, I know we have one. We might have multiples, and I'm waiting for a response to see if we do, all right? I love you guys. Keep praying for us. We're praying for you, and we'll talk to you real soon. God bless.